folks, welcome back to What Really Matters. It's great to continue this conversation with Karen Justice Gunn. Karen is the CEO of Safe Havens. She's also a partner in the Approved Realty and Mortgage Group. It's based out of Concord, but it's more than that. This is a group that really brings hope to people who desperately need it. Karen, hearing it live really, I feel, brings it to life. I appreciate you being on the show with us. Thanks, Tim. Let's dive into it. I mean, in previous segments, we've discussed what the program is, how it came about, what your experiences are. And for listeners who may be tuning in the first time, the program really is designed to get people off of welfare and into work. It's designed to address all the needs that people have, whether it is transportation, housing, domestic violence, drug abuse, or the softer skills that are equally important, interviewing, resume writing, things like that. Dare I say it, it's almost a holistic life plan. Would that be an accurate statement, Karen? Yeah, I mean, we're not raised with a blueprint how to live on life's terms. And <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping to get one of those from you. Yeah, and um, I think that's really what Safe Haven has evolved to, of all the lessons in the last 11 years of creating Safe Haven, of what it is today. And, you know, like I said at the last interview, is I think one of the critical things was my educational program. It's called mm -hmm. MAP, Make a Plan for Your Life. You know, do we know how to make a plan for our life? We know how to show up to it, mm -hmm. but do we really show up to it? Do we really show up to opportunity when it presents itself? Are we ready for that opportunity? So, you know, going back through my experience is that I really needed to be a whole person to be ready for opportunity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my clients are me, you know. There's times that I am so broken, and then the next day I'm not, because I took the next right uh, decision, mm -hmm. the next right, uh, uh, you know, suggestion from someone, and just that, it's like, all of a sudden when you get a resentment, today what I do when I get a resentment uh -huh. at a person that makes me so mad or says something to me, I say, bless you, change me. Before I would say that four-letter word oh, yeah. and want to retaliate. Mm -hmm. And it never got a result. It got me negative stuff and it never made me feel good about myself. So now when I look at life, I have to look at everything about life. And where's my part in it? Where did I step on the toes of others and later they retaliated? Mm -hmm. Because I had a part. And that's just ownership, you know, and, and so that's where I came up with the WELL program for Safe Haven. Work, Tell us earn, about it. It's, it. it's called WELL, Work, Earn, Live, and Learn. Okay, Work, Earn, Live, and Learn. All right. How do we get there? Well, it's a process. You know, we have to work. Mm -hmm. We have to learn how to work. And we need to, uh, you know, show up to that. Mm -hmm. But when we have factors that is addiction, domestic violence, kids, mm -hmm. you're by yourself, the husband is left or the wife is left, mm -hmm. or you've just come out of prison, you leave prison with $200. Where are you going to go from there? No one wants to hire you. That's right. A you vicious know, cycle. It's a vicious cycle. So yeah, um, the people that I help are the ones at the bottom of the, the barrel, which they put themselves there. Mm -hmm. You know, Domestic violence, I put myself in domestic violence. Yeah, I was a victim. Yes, I'm a survivor. Yes. But I needed to own how I got there, you know. When I did inventories to see, you know, when I ran off a 30-foot cliff, how did I get to running off a 30-foot cliff? Well, let's see. Every time I'd leave, I'd go back. I'd put myself there. So ownership is really, you know, they say in the program, rarely have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed our, our path. Those who do recover are those who will completely give themselves honestly to this program. You, that's, that's half the fight. It's a desire to change. And you know what, it's amazing because when people meet me, mm -hmm. they don't see someone that's an ex-heroin addict, that was homeless mm -hmm. and downtrodden. You know, they see an intelligent, vibrant, passionate woman trying to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And it can change that quickly. Folks, she says it well. Bless you, change me, live and learn, take ownership. I can't stress it enough. It's easy to beat yourself up. So take ownership for your part in whatever it may be. 
In Karen's case, some of the people she's working with, it's addictions, it's domestic violence. In my particular situation, yes, I do see those who have financial means, but are finding that they have run into financial difficulty. Take ownership, realize how it came about, but by the same token, let's move beyond. Don't remain a victim, look to be a survivor. Karen, I was thinking about the well model. Again, work, earn, live and learn. And you know, part of me almost felt like saying, well, no, duh, that's an obvious model. But then I realized the clients you see don't necessarily have that mindset. And certainly I have seen plenty of clients in the financial advisory world who have done the work and earn, but they haven't done the learning part. And yes, they've lived it up and now I'm there trying to fix the remnants. How did that model come about and was it related to the 12-step model? Yeah, it really is. Um, you know, as it says, well, you know, we need to be, have a mindset what's well. Okay. And to get that, you have to do your work. Mm -hmm. And the first part is identifying the problem. And that's really like what step one is. Mm -hmm. I had to admit and have a desire that I had a problem and that my life was unmanageable. Oh, yeah. So when you take that step, that moves you into the educational side, you know, and that's about step four, you mm -hmm. know, when you do that moral, thorough inventory of, you know, all the harms you have done or the resentments that you had or the fears that you had and, you know, it goes off into the sex relationships. I mean, it all comes... Yeah. But it's all a moral inventory and an in-depth look at you. At you. And, and it's a four-part process, because first you have to name that person, you know, and then you have to why you have that resentment or that fear, and then what did it affect, your self-esteem, your security, whatever that may be, and then you have to do your part. And that's where we really look at a pattern of our defects of character. Mm -hmm. you know, this time around where I sit today and after my struggles, and we'll get into that later, I, after 20 years of being around this program, this last inventory that I've done, mm -hmm. I really got to take, I had a list of people, and when I saw my defects of character, there was a list as long as the people that I had the list. Wow. And, and it's just kind of like it started with the people pleasing, mm -hmm. and then when my expectations weren't met, mm -hmm. Then that started the victimization, and then the self-pity came, and then the sloth came, and self-seeking, and self-centeredness. And that's what character defects are that bind us down, instead of being all what we can be. And so that's really what the WELL program is, is that you do, the, you do your work. You find out who you are, and what makes you tick, and why you did that. But the solution is, learn that information, and get well with it, and then change your actions. And it's a belief system. You've got to let go of that belief system that probably worked a long time for you, and mm -hmm. then stopped working, and then because it stopped working, you couldn't live with yourself, so then you had to numb out, and then you were unmanageable, and your life was just going further and further down. So that's basically what the WELL program is, work, earn, live, and learn, because once you become a whole person, you can start building a different belief system, and you change your thinking because your actions have changed. Well, folks, it is definitely based on the 12-step model, but certainly I see practical applications in my work as a financial advisor. Again, you need to be able to take control of the spending, or you need to take a realistic assessment of where you are and where you want to go. And sometimes it's not fun. I'll be very honest with you. Many years ago, I had a client who told me his goals, his needs. We laid out the financial plan. And unfortunately, the conclusion we wound up reaching is that if the goals and needs did not change, he would need to sell his place in the Bay Area and wound up moving outside of Phoenix. Well, I did hear from him later that he was able to leave or meet those needs and goals. Uh, the only downside, of course, was the heat in Phoenix. It was very, very hot out there. So yes, sometimes sacrifices are needed, but you need to be able to be realistic and move forward.